welcome everybody. We'll be starting in roughly one minute again. Um, we're not going to start. 59. 58. How dare you? How dare you? No, please don't. Oh, please. Oh, okay. I like CM Punk. What do you want me to do? Yeah. I have a short I'm a wrestling ring. fan. Caitlin makes her Who own. Who said way. Judas, by the way? Did somebody say Judas? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Our table looks like the last summer, and I'm like, Judas. 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 I would I would headbang, but my doctor told me I had to stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got two. I appreciate it. Peter right there. Chris Jericho fan? Yes. Yes. Judas. Judas and Mama. All right, we got three. Yeah, come on, man. I finally watched my first wrestling match. All right. I don't remember. It was at like. Wait, why were they showing wrestling? It was a live wrestling match in Buffalo Wild Wings parking lot. They do know it's choreographed, right? Yes. It's not okay. Yeah. Two servers really had beef. <laughs> it was cool though. So my friend was like, "Hey, we want to we want to get our other buddy into wrestling. What's the first match we should show them?" We showed them Undertaker, Mankind, Hell in a Cell '98, where he yeah. gets thrown off the cell. That's pretty good. That was the first match we showed him, just to give him a perspective of what this could be. And on that note, oh, NBA Los Angeles, <laughs> welcome to the Voice Actors Roundtable. That's right. I'll give yourselves a round of applause for being here. So, my name is Andrew J. Alandi. I have the, the daunting, almost impossible task of wrangling this wonderful panel here of voice actors, professionals, those who are bringing the characters you love to life. So, uh, a couple of things here for the, for the voice actors here. Uh, this is more freeform, the way I do my roundtables. Topic, feel free to vibe on the mic, talk about it, please, to make sure, uh, please make sure to Give everybody a voice as well. Uh, let's see. He's in the restroom right now. Yeah, he'll be back. So he'll be back. Our pee pee boy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm gonna tell him that's his new nickname. Uh, I would not like to take ownership of the pee pee boy. You guys can share him amongst yourselves. <laughs> Got it. Right. Fair enough. So what we'll do? We'll toss topics at you. Feel free to answer. We'll call order if we need to. If I need to rein you in. Do you have a gavel? I wish. You need one. I, I'm going to down. There's an app for that, actually. Is there really? <laughs> there, act, there, pro there probably is. But also, there is a guidebook app, folks, if you are keeping track of your stay here at Anime Los Angeles, the guidebook app to keep track of all of your events. And also, you can create your own schedules. That way, you have a good lineup of what to do throughout the day. And there's also maps in there. So if you're curious on where anything is, you'll be able to look for it there. All right, there's our final member of our team here, our adventuring Yay! party. Hi, I am. Pee Pee Boy. Late. That's the name. Pee Pee Boy. Hey, Pee Pee Boy. Pee Pee Boy. Pee Pee Boy. The Pee Pee Boy. Oh no. This is my life now. So this sorry. is a PG thirteen <laughs> panel. Just so we're I was clear. the one who said it. I'll, 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 I'll live. Thank it's fine. Anime Los Angeles. See what I mean? Yeah. Uh, voice actors, if you wouldn't yes. mind at least uh, going down the line and introducing yourselves, I'd like to start at the at the very end. That way. Uh, we get an introduction for those who may not be in the know, um, although I'm fairly certain most do know, there may be some who don't. So if we would mind just down the line, just introduce yourselves and just a little high, maybe a little bit about what you've done and things like that. <laughs> okay, hi, I am Caitlin Glass and um oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Got I am Haruhi Fujioka and we're on the next little host club. <laughs> this is, uh, our friends are so delightfully announcing. Um, also Winry and Full Metal Alchemist. Wow. Mina. Mina and My Hero Academia. Vivi and One Piece. Uh, what other stuff? Like things. Damien right now and Spy Family. <laughs> and most of my days are spent uh, directing anime dubs actually. Uh, you can catch uh, some cool stuff that I'm working on, like solo leveling, uh, very, very soon. Yeah. Oh! oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I was in the other version of One Piece. Um, <laughs> hi. We My still love you. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'm okay with it. Uh, my name is Tara Sands. I got my start. Uh, my very first anime job was on Pokemon Season 1. Hey. Uh, Yay! Very old. Uh, yeah, and I, uh, 
worked on a lot of shows back in the day at Four Kids, Yu-Gi-Oh! with the Book of Akaiba, Shaman King, Anna, uh, and recent stuff. I work on Jujutsu Kaisen, I work on um, Hunter Hunter, um, I don't remember. That's me. Yay! There is story list there, and again, folks, a lot of it, if we're missing it, it is in the guidebook app, too, so don't feel free to pull out everything out there, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm Amber May. Um, I'm the voice of Dia in Genshin Impact and uh, Yan Ching in Honkai Star Rail. Um, I'm also the voice of Barbie, of uh, Brooklyn Barbie in the Hi, movie. Barbie. Oh. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie! <laughs> um, I'm also Billy from Billy Bus Stuff. It's yeah. 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 I'm happy to be up here. Yay. And the narrator and Comey can't communicate. I forget about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, that's my favorite one. Like, yeah. biggest of all. <laughs> so good. Hello, my name's Edward Bosco. You've probably heard me in uh, that pilot of Has Been Hotel. It's Alistair. I striker in the second season of Hell of a Boss. Uh, you've probably also heard me as Ed in Street Fighter. Chip in yeah. Guilty Gear. Oh, my God. Street Fighter, I appreciate you. Wow. I appreciate you. Okay, all right. There. Oh, Thank you. Also, IMDb is your friend. I, I we we got to move. Like crazy. <laughs> hey, what's up? That. I'm Austin Lee Matthews. I'm the voice of Roche in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, I'm Fire Spirit Cookie in Fire Cookie Run Kingdom. I'm going to be the voice of Hidetoshi Odagiri in Persona 3 Reload. Hey. And uh, I'm uh, Ash Carbide in Trails of Cold Steel and Trails into Reverie. Let's go. Hello everyone, I'm Mark Allen Jr. Uh, you might know me as the voice of Ukio and Dr. Stone. Yay! Uh, yeah, look at that. Okay. I, uh, I played uh, Derma Altland in Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. Uh, you might have also heard me in a show called The Day I Became a God. I played Yota Narukami. So good. And, You'll uh, cry. <laughs> you will cry. <laughs> we promise. And a number of other things. If you've ever seen One Piece, you've probably heard me die. <laughs> nobody dies in one piece. Uh, hi, I'm Chris Niosi. Oh, no, I'm nobody, apparently. You're the podium. Pee -pee boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm Pee -pee boy. Pee -pee boy. Pee -pee boy. We did not plan that. Personal best boy. Um, I, uh, I'm uh, Reagan Artaka in Mob Psycho 100. Yeah, you are. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love that show very much. Uh, Shawa Poof in Hunter Hunter. Uh, oh gosh, uh, Dezel and Tails is Tyria. Hey, uh, hey. uh, I've done uh, several Pokemon characters, several different Gundam series, many different shows uh, since 2009 I started. Um, I also, if you're an internet person, you might also know me as Kerbifer. I do animation, I've made my uh, video games, I've done some voice directing for things, I've Tone. written for a lot of stuff. Tone, terrain of magic expertise, thank you. Uh, See, I've done some Tone oh, thank, thank you. Uh, and I'm, I haven't been to ALA in years, and I'm happy to be back and meet all y'all. So thank you for having me. Chris, thank you for leading into my first question. Oh, perfect. Which was uh, actually, I just want to ask all of our panelists. So far, how is your ALA going? Uh, is this your first time here? If it is, you know, what have you experienced so far? If it's not your first time here, what's changed for you? And, and again, your overall experience here so far. Let's just check in with all. And again, feel free to chime in wherever, or we'll just go down the line, and I'll call on you like it's school. Uh, so, oh yeah, go ahead, go. I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an ALA vet, but I've never been to this location in Long Beach. I've done the Marriott when they were by LAX, if you guys remember that. I've done the Ontario one. My first time here in Long Beach, I'm really enjoying the city, the ocean view. The convention's been great, the space is great, the staff has been great. Oh, yeah. So make sure you thank all the staff. It's been a, a smooth ride, and I'm having yeah. a blast. They're taking very good care of us. Honestly, it's flying by for me, and I just hope that I get to do another one because this is a, this is a really yeah. nice venue, and we really appreciate all you guys coming out to support us and support the convention. Yes. Yeah, this is my second one. I did 2017 in Ontario, and I just remembered as the Ribbon Con, and I am just very excited to be yeah. back at the Ribbon Con. That could be the new official name of this convention. I love it. Um, yeah, just you know, I was saying to someone earlier, there's something much. Even though this is a big show, it feels very communal, and I think like the ribbons and do have something to do with that, like because it forces you to interact with people, and it's just a really lovely convention. So, and this, you're right, the staff is awesome. So, thank you for yeah. letting us be here. I like being rewarded for interacting with other human beings. <laughs> <laughs> really nice time. This is my first ALA um, as a guest. Um, I was here last year as a, a con goer in January. Dia was already out, but I was in the shadows because I wasn't allowed to announce it. So I'm like, 
just like going around as a con goer. But yeah, thank the staff for keeping us hydrated with proud source spring water. <laughs> <laughs> we are not sponsored. Um, I, uh, I can't remember what year the last time I went to ALA. It might have been like 2015 or 16 or something. But I had a great time. Uh, I had always known this con for like really cool panels. Uh, my, my friend Wes runs like Bonds Arcade and, and a game show and some other stuff. And I've always heard great things about this one. Uh, weirdly enough, also, when it comes to this venue, uh, I have not been in this building since 2007. Same, when, yeah, same. When, when AX was here. Yes, yep. and I was there. I know that's right. I think we met there. We might have met mm -hmm. around there. Yeah. And I remember being in this is super nostalgic because it was when Funimation, now Crunchyroll, the, for, the artist formerly was Funimation, <laughs> had, uh, first got One Piece and they announced the Straw Hat uh, voice actors. And that was like this huge celebratory moment and all this kind of thing. So this is double nostalgia because it's both ALA again and bigger and better than ever. And also like days long past in this venue as well. So it's just it's super cool to be in here with all y'all. So. I uh, attended ALA 5, 6, and 7 as an attendee. Uh, and then I last attended ALA in 2015 or 2016. Uh, I mean, it was still the Marriott at the time. Uh, and so this is not only my first time back at ALA since then, but it is my first convention since 2019. Woo! So very excited to be able to have my first time back on the con scene at a con that I really love. Yeah. This place is awesome. The community that's been around here, as, uh, as uh, Caitlin and Tara said, uh, is awesome. Yeah. And also ribbons. I yeah. only have one, by the way, so yeah. if anybody has spare ribbons, I will have You're them. You're behind there. I know, I feel so inadequate. <laughs> Look for a Magalore and a Meta Knight, they're gonna give you like 50 ribbons. Yeah. Uh, my, so, the first panel that I ever co-hosted was 11 years ago today at my first Anime Los Angeles, uh, which was back in the Marriott. Um, and I, Anime Los Angeles is historically my favorite convention. Uh, the last time I was here, this was actually the last convention that I went to before the pandemic in 2020. Um, and, and this is my first convention I've done since then! Yay! I love Anime Los Angeles, I'm really happy to be here. Everyone's been great, the staff has been great. Make sure you give them all your love. And uh, yeah, that's my spiel. Oh, yeah. I think we got everybody there. Yeah. You are all, you're psychic, by the way. That's twice now you're leading into my next question with what you're talking about. Work good. I love it. And you didn't read my, I know you didn't read this. This is perfect. Uh, so, voice actors, talk to me, of course. You know, we survived a pandemic. We've, go, we've gotten through it. Thank you uh, to those who have all supported. Your voices have been some of the things that have really gotten us through it, all the entertainment. Uh, talk to us about the differences with voice acting that was like pre-pandemic versus procedures now. What's different? What's the same? Uh, and again, take it away. Feel free. Talk about it. I mean, uh, the, I think what the pandemic did, at least for me and some of the friends that I know that don't live in Los Angeles, is it really opened the door for a lot of people who don't live locally to where a lot of stuff is done to be able to get their start and try their hand at some stuff. I have friends that live in the UK that were able to do anime during the pandemic because certain studios were doing remote and they kind of opened the doors wide and they happened to fit the role. And since the pandemic's been over, that slowly started to lessen a little bit, but I think showing that it's possible really did open the doors to be like, hey, there's the potential in the right situation for somebody who's not necessarily in LA or in Texas to be able to do some of this work. Um, but I would lean on the people who direct for a living to tell me if that's still the case. <laughs> Now you need to be even more of your own audio engineer. Um, it's expected more of you than before 2020. Like, if your home studio isn't up to studio quality standards, it's... Mm, yeah. yeah, a lot more of like the, the um, actors who normally would not have had home studios, who like almost exclusively did studio work, now had to get home studios mm -hmm. and like... There are people who I, when I was recording my radio play, I would have had to record all of them in a studio, but mo most of them already had equipment, but a bunch of them had gotten equipment by the time that I recorded it. Um, and so that made that so much easier that we didn't have to like, you know, rent out a studio or anything like that. So that was, yeah. that was good for that. I knew people who lost work um, in 2020 because yeah. they didn't have a workable yeah. home studio. They yep. were used to coming into the studio, so home, their home studio wasn't ready, so. Yeah, that was a dead year for me because I had like, 
I think I was like one of the three people that didn't build a home studio <laughs> during that time. Um, and it's funny because a lot of the folks uh, that were kind of ahead of the game on that, that had built a home studio for like commercial stuff and other things, were kind of ahead of the curve already. I'm like, oh, I, I'm just, it's another day for me. Um, but, uh, but no, it is really cool. A, a, a bunch of us have, have produced our own kind of projects and things where we had been working with people all over the way, UK, Australia, anywhere. Um, that as long as they had a microphone or just anything, like they could work on a project. And uh, and now the fact that it, did, it it has slowed down for sure, but there are a lot of producers that are just like, can you do the work? Are you good? Are you what we need? Like, uh, you know, bring it on, uh, which is great. I, I am of the, I personally always like to go in because as Amber was implying, I don't like being my own my own engineer because I don't have enough brain cells for that. Yeah, that because <laughs> we're so busy trying to like get any character and all this, and not worry about like mic glitches because it just completely takes us out of the immersion. Yeah. One of the things that I noticed uh, that was true before the pandemic, but I think is more true now, um, is how much voice actors have each other's backs. Yeah. Um, we all got so used to going into the studio and seeing people and being able to just say hi and check in and see how everyone was doing. And then when everything shut down and we started working remotely and from home, we didn't have that anymore. Um, and also, there were a lot of friendships that were started up over Twitter and Discord during that time because you could not go and see these people. And once we started opening studios back up and people started going back in to record again, you would see people that you've been friends with for two years for the first time. Yeah. And so it was so much more exuberant to get back into the studio and see your fellow actors and be able to be in a creative space with each other again. Um, I think the energy tends to be brighter now. It was already very positive, but it's just now we're all just so thankful to be able to be seeing each other again that you really just feel a sense of, of welcome and, and warmth when you go into the studio now, which yeah. is, is it's fantastic. Anything else that? Okay, cool. I like it. I like the nods. That's great. That's great. They said it all. They did. They did. <laughs> Good. No upset there. Let's go with a basic question here. Origins with voice acting. What got you in? Was it was it a specific <clears throat> show? Or did you hear a specific actor or actress who spoke their lines and you said, you know what, I want to do that? What brought you into this? What was the what the, the earliest that you can remember where you said, okay, I want to do that? that there was a moment that I went, I'm going to be a voice actor. In fact, I know that there was not one. <laughs> Instead, it was, I'm going to be an actor. Uh, I made the decision out of high school that what I would study in college would be acting. And I went to, um, I'm from San Diego, but I moved I'm to, from San Diego, but I moved to Dallas and lived with family to go to college um, out in Texas. It was just less expensive. Any California natives can attest to the cost of college in California. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I went out there, but it's pretty serendipitous because that is where, um, as Chris put it, the company formerly known as, <laughs> the artist formerly known as Funimation, um, that's where Funimation is based. So a lot of local to Dallas uh, talent will find an opportunity to audition there, and that is what happened to me. Um, my audition opportunity, however, came while I was on a tour of the studio, being given to me by my friend who's an engineer. And Eric Vale, who knows who Eric Vale is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> shout out to the man who hired me. He was directing at the time, but there were no actors in the booth. So when he heard that I was an acting student, had me get in the booth, and I thought it was just part of the tour. Like, hey, this is a booth, put on the headphones, this is what the actors do. He had me say a line, and then when I came out, he's like, great, give your information to our talent coordinator and you can work here. <laughs> well, wasn't he, if I'm remembering right, wasn't he like, you were gonna present your resume? He said, no, 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 I don't, yeah, I don't need that. I, I don't had need all that. that. Yeah. I was a trained actor. I knew to always come prepared, and I had it. He's like, uh, we just need your phone number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He knew. And also, I had a huge crush on Eric Vale because I watched anime, and like, I'm like, oh my god, it's Trunks. You know? Yeah. Like, and he's a handsome man, so like the whole time I was just like, keep it together, keep it together. Oh my god. Uh, so that was pretty wild. That was on a Thursday and Saturday, I mean, no, Sunday. We were recording on a Sunday because we were under pressure to get stuff going on a show called Case Closed, or you may know it oh, as Detective Conan. Oh, yeah. So I was in on the very first episode of Case Closed being directed by the Prince of All Saiyans, uh, Chris Sabat, for my very first session. Yes. So, yeah, and that was uh, 20 years ago. 
Yeah, it was January of 2004. So that's how it started for me. Um, I was in high school and I grew up near New York City. And I was, lived in New Jersey. I was in a local singing competition at the Y. And uh, there was a talent agent there, and, and you know, I was, I just, I knew I was going to be a very serious theater actress. <laughs> and uh, the first audition they sent me on was for a voiceover, and I was like, what's that? And uh, my mom's like, I have to drive you into the city. Uh, so she drove me in, it was an audition for Compound W Wart Cream. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this, this is a glamorous career, if nothing else. And uh, I had to say something like, ew, gross, a wart. And I got the job. Like, it was very convincing. I got, yeah, it was my very, <laughs> my very first audition. And my mom's like, they're going to pay you for that? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, we're starting a college fund. And, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and then I would, you know, I continued to do other things. Again, you know, like Caitlin said, we're actors at the end of the day. That's what I would do anything acting wise they sent me on. But voiceover is kind of what I took to and what stuck. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. from compound W to. I should have a better catchphrase, but yeah, that's my origin story. <laughs> um, those who came to uh, the Audition 101 panel yesterday know about one of my audition, uh, one of my uh, origin stories, but this one I didn't tell. Um, when I was about four or five years old, um, the teacher was going around the, the class going, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, they pointed at one, one said, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a fireman, I want to be a policeman. They get to me, and I'm like, I want to be a parrot! And they're oh, like, parrots. and the teacher was like, a parrot? I'm like, yeah, 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 because in the cartoons, they can copy whatever voice they want! Oh, oh my gosh. I was also in special ed classes. I was very <laughs> special ed. So, so the teacher understood me, and the teacher got me, so I guess that counts as an origin story. <laughs> Otherwise, Freakazoid was my inspiration. Super yeah. tune extraordinaire Freakazoid? Yes, that man. I met him for the first time and nearly cried last year. Want to go to the Hall of Spackle? I'm gonna go to the Hall of Spackle. What I? What I? Oh, I freaking love that show. <laughs> Oh, it's me. Oh, I can't follow that. Uh, so, most of the people you'll hear from started off in theater or something. I uh, was a sports guy. I hated the theater kids. So, when I went to college, I was a journalist. I wanted to either play sports or cover sports. Um, and then there was this show called Red vs. Blue. And I had just graduated, and I went, you know, it'd be fun if I was in Red vs. Blue, because I play Halo semi professionally. That'd be really fun. And through just Googling, Rooster Teeth and how to get into Red vs. Blue, I found some message boards called the Voice Acting Club and the Voice Acting Alliance. And uh, I started auditioning for indie projects on there because I'm like, oh, maybe eventually I'll get in Red vs. Blue. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but then it was actually kind of fun. And I was like, all right, well, then I got to figure out what this is all about. So I started interning at studios. So I interned first at a place called Bang Zoom that does a lot of anime. Uh, I did something called AX Idol where I lost, but I made the finals, which was fun. Then I entered at Nickelodeon. And I worked in their casting department for about three months in 2011. So and I went, oh, this is what it takes. So as soon as that internship was over, January 6th of 2012, I moved to Los Angeles. I said, it's time to figure out if I can do this. Uh, and one of the first games I ever did was called Dust and Elysian Tale on the Xbox Live Arcade. Oh, wow. Uh, a lot of us got our start in that. That was me, Erica Mendez, Lizzie Freeman, who's here, Amber Lee Connors. All of us started on that game for the most part. And now we're here. Very cool. So I've, I've always kind of been described as the family noisemaker, uh, like throughout my whole life. Um, but I, I, I can really trace it back to I watched uh, a lot of SpongeBob and um, and I played a lot of Halo, like you. Yes. Um, and I, so I watched the the SpongeBob season one DVD that has the voice actors uh, like commentaries and the special features, like the behind the scenes for that. And I watched that. Probably more than I watched the actual show, I just absolutely was like fascinated by it. And then I also, my dad got the Halo 2 Collector's Edition, which comes with the behind the scenes DVD that has a bit of feature about the voiceover about that. And I watched that also probably more times than I've played Halo 2 all the way through. Whoa. Yeah, right? Yeah, it, it, it's called being autistic. Um, and, um, and, and so that, just, that always really stuck with me, like, wow, like this, this dumb thing that I do could be a career, but I was like, ah, I, I could never do that. Um, but then I wanted to be an animator, um, 
And I was like, you know what, I want to be an animator and I want to do my voices for my own cartoons and have that be a thing. And then I did not have the patience for animation. I'm like, well, I've already got the voiceover stuff. I might as well do that. So I went all in, all in on that and then uh, got an agent in 2019. And then the year after that, um, I booked Halo Infinite. So that comes hey! back around. And this is a funny story about that. So. Um, I was telling them like that that's how I got in and like you know I'm like I'm, I'm a massive Halo nerd I love it and they're just like oh okay cool like that's yeah that's sure how big of a Halo nerd can you be and I'm just like well I know that uh, the grunts are called Ungoy I know that the, the jackals are called Kigyar I know that the elites are called Sangheili and they're just like what <laughs> and, and, I, and I said the, I said the only one that I don't know is the hunters that's only because it has so many consonants that I can't it's pronounce like, it it's like five it is oh. mega it is pronounced megalecolo. Is that actually how you That is it? how you pronounce it, it's Megalecolo. And they said, they said that, I'm like, cool, I now officially know all of the Halo races by their name. And we start, we start recording, and they realize that they don't need to give me literally any direction because I know exactly what's going on at any given time. Because it's freaking Halo. It sure is. And like halfway into the session, the guys on that from 343 are on the other end of the line, and they say, hey, so we've changed your character's code name in our system. And I go, what, what does that mean? Like, yeah, like, so, like, you have, like, you know, Marine and Marine 2, Marine 3. We've changed Marine 3 to Halo Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you have no idea Wait, how much of a... Are you one of the Marines? Yes, I'm Let's go! I'm the, oh, I'm the Marine that has the illustrious line of, Chief, hey, Chief, uh, after this is over, can you maybe, like, we can, like, bro it out, see where it goes? <laughs> that was just, you! Just, just be, all right! That's me. I, I beat that game. Okay, I make you very happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, like Ed, I was not an actor from birth. Uh, I was an entertainer for sure. I enjoyed making people laugh, but I was the science nerd kid growing Yay! up. Uh, and I happened to have a group of friends who, since sixth grade, had been in acting. And I was the science person in our group of friends, and they were the actors. And in 11th grade, my best friend Elena begged me to do musical theater with her because I loved singing and goofing around and, and I didn't think anything of it at the time. And I kind of fell in love with just playing pretend on a stage with other people, even in high school. And so my senior year, I took acting one, which you're supposed to take as a freshman, but I took it as a senior. And um, I think we were three months into the, or two months into the class and the teacher took me aside after class and said, Mark, I'm really mad at you. And I said, why? And he said, because you're really good and I can't do anything with you because you're in acting one. <laughs> so he wrote a letter to the, to the school district and got permission to put me in the Night of One Acts. And I was the first person at my school to do that who was doing it from acting one. Um, and it was at that point I was like, maybe I should look into this, but it's, it's probably not, I'm never gonna be like Tom Cruise. I'm not gonna make money or anything. Uh, and then that same friend, my friend Elena, happened to go to college uh, with someone you might have heard with someone you might have heard her name. Uh, she goes by Christina B. Um, she's uh, kind of famous a little bit, a little, little bit famous, yeah. Um, something about a ladybug. Something about a ladybug. Something about a ladybug. Yeah. Um, I think she's like a food truck. Or something. <laughs> she, who? she is a food truck. Oh, it was yeah. the food Let's truck person. Yeah, food yeah, truck yeah. Person. Okay. <laughs> but she, my, my friend Elena hosted all these uh, parties. Uh, we had one Halloween party. Christina came over and we had a three hour conversation about what voiceover was. Uh, and I said, well, that sounds like something I can do because I don't think I look that handsome and I'm never going to be confident on a camera and I have stage fright. Uh, so I guess I'll do voiceover. That's a cool way to do it. Yeah, let's, let's put your voice under a microscope. <laughs> and yeah. it I didn't realize I was going to have to listen to myself so much. <laughs> but uh, that was really how I got started. And uh, my, first, my first professional job, I made $20 as the uh, narrator for an Australian art film. Uh, and from there, I kind of just went where the winds would take me. Australian art film. Yeah. That's the name of my indie band. <laughs> what kind of music? Oh, oh my god. What kind of music? Don't. It's indie. <laughs> I'm not yeah. smart enough for the rest of this joke. Um, okay. okay, hear me out on the beginning of this story. Uh, do any of you guys know an old live action Nickelodeon show called The Adventures of Pete and Pete? Yeah! Uh, so yes. my sister Allison mm -hmm. was Ellen, the lead girl on that show. 
And I was a baby when she was doing that and filming it all around Long Island and New Jersey and stuff. And she also did the voiceover for it. And she did some voiceover for Nick and like Kmart and stuff like that. So from a very young age, I understood what voice acting and acting was. I'm like, oh, okay, it's like playing pretend for money. Sure, okay. Um, as I grew older, you know, I'm sure much like everybody, a lot of the people that we know, I was a goofball, I did lots of impressions, didn't think much of it. Uh, I did become an animator and was drawing and doing lots of stuff and producing things. And um, around like the early 2000s or so, uh, just actually, just shortly after the artist formerly known as Funimation, uh, <laughs> uh, was getting established with the Dallas Talent Blog people in the early days of DBZ and, and Yu Yu Hakusho and Fruits Basket, all that kind of stuff. Um, I found this site called TV Tone, which was like a pre-Wikipedia sort of thing, it was like a database kind of thing. And I started learning, wait, the guy who does SpongeBob is also like Dog from Cat Dog, and the guy who plays Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho is also like Raditz and Superboo and all these kind of things. And it was Yu Yu Hakusho, Justin Cook, uh, something, I don't know what it was, but something about his performance as Yusuke, uh, uh, right around that time, I was like, I want to be that. So I don't understand what that means, but somehow, and then as I learned more and more about the business and listened to a lot of like the commentaries, Caitlin, you and like your colleagues did on the old DVDs and learning, oh, this is how the dubbing industry works, and this is how you make a career out of this, and et cetera. And then when I was in college, um, similar to Bosco's thing about AX Idol, I, on a whim, entered a contest that um, two directors in New York who did anime stuff were directing. I entered on a whim, won it. Uh, and then it was the prize was originally going to be we'll just give you a cameo in an anime we're doing a little like you know bit part or something, um, and then like a whole year later I I didn't get given a bit I was given an audition for Pokemon, and the director of the show at the time was like I know that we like owe you because of the contest but I wouldn't really bring you in for this if I didn't think you were good and I was like oh all right sure, cool so I did my first job in 2009 was five episodes of Pokemon, which dream come true because that was my first anime and I was still in love with the series after all that time. It was back when Diamond and Pearl was new and now we have a re Aww. remake of Diamond and Pearl. I'm ancient. Anyway, uh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so I did that and I thought, okay, cool. I, I got to be on Pokemon. I'm not going to go any further than that. And then suddenly... People were recommending me for indie games and some other dubbing stuff. And then I moved to L.A. in 2014 and had a lot of very wonderful friends that already were somewhat familiar with my work, recommended me for stuff. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, this is, I'm like making a living doing this now. Sick. So, and, and the rest is, is history. Well done. Everyone, each of our voice actors is coming. They're awesome. These are awesome stories. We try. You try, and you succeed, which is the most important thing here. Who had the best one? I was a parrot. Why do you gotta make it a competition? Because <laughs> now you don't, don't, don't do that to me. We don't deal with rejection at all. The answer is right there. Where? Were you feet two from the end? Best story. Amber? Yeah. Amber? What? Uh, two, I just wanted two, to be a parrot. Two, 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 from, two, two from, from, the, from the right, from the... Me? No, yes. Oh, oh, there you go. Mark likes I won with Mark Never mind. It's been the side. Work, work, the bit, the bit is absolutely it? horrible, and I have ruined it, and I own that. How many voice actors does it take to figure out which one, one, one of us is sitting? <laughs> <laughs> What's the third question? Now, what are we, an hour in? I think that was the third question. Oh, God. We don't all have to answer. Yet. You don't all have to. That's true. I should show <laughs> I'm just watching you squirm, Bosco. Oh, my God. I'm keeping it really simple for you all. Earliest influences as a voice actor. Who's been your North Star? Earliest influences, and also even today, because I know we're still continually influenced by our fellow pair, uh, our peers. So, who's been your North Star before when you started, and, of course, even today? Uh, Mel Blanc, Frank Welker, Dee Bradley Baker, Fred Tattashore. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Paul Rudd, Tom Kenny, uh, Jeff Bennett, and uh, earlier, yeah, Caitlin Glass. Good. What? Like, yeah. Stop it. I watched so much Oran. <laughs> it's like, it's my so favorite sweet. anime. My second favorite is Death Note. But yeah! My favorite one. You know what? I was in middle school at the time. I marathoned it. <laughs> I'm gonna be really sappy. I'm gonna say literally all of my friends that I get to work with are Aww. like like really like inspire me like every day to like be better. Like I was on a show called The Beach Buds with a bunch of people who I really look up to, and it was a really really beautiful moment where like I formed this family with a bunch of people who I already looked up to, and 
it was just a beautiful experience and I'm really glad that I still get you know inspiration from these people who I am really good friends with and that's yeah that's where I get my inspiration from. I'll go with Robin Williams both because oh, yeah. of yes. uh, because of Aladdin but also because of Mrs. Doubtfire that opened yes. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really not how we dub no <laughs> <laughs> But I, such that scene, to see him be a voice actor, like, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, gosh, uh, when I was young, before I really knew what voice acting was or even cared about it, I remember I was obsessed with The Little Mermaid uh, the first time around, like in 1989, a little redhead kid. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she has red hair, that's so great. And I remember being in um, a bookstore with my mom, in the Christian bookstore, and there was a CD there, and it wasn't even a CD because I'm old, it was a tape. Um, <laughs> let's be real, it was a cassette. Um, and it was like the voice of the Little Mermaid, Jody Benson, and she had a, an album of like kids' Christian music. And I'm like, voice of the Little Mermaid. And I mean, I wasn't an, a moron. I knew that cartoons were not actually talking. I just hadn't really thought of the fact that they're, who the people are that did the voices. And then I'm like, oh wow. And also, she loves Jesus, like me. That's so cool. <laughs> Seriously, you guys, this is, this is my little, you know, however old I was. Thank you. Thank you. That girl probably loves Jesus like me, too. Yes, thank you. And Jody Benson. Um, yeah, so I'm like, wow, that's so neat. So that's the first time I'm like, click, that's a, that's a job. But then I was just, you know, interested in, I don't know, being a marine biologist or whatever you want to yes. be when you're 10. Wait, wait, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 How many yeah. of us on this panel wanted to be a marine biologist growing up? I grew up in San Diego wait, going to what? like look at whales and dolphins every weekend. Yeah, yeah. 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 ocean. Yeah. I, wanted, the I wanted to study manta rays growing up. Yeah. yeah. How did we get here? I was talking about Jody Benson. <laughs> We're learning I don't know. so many things today. But yeah. Uh, so I had always been just enamored with her and her career and just just her poise as a woman and being Ariel and all of that. And a handful of years ago, I was going to Milwaukee for an anime convention. We're coming down the uh, escalator, and I see someone, like a driver, holding a sign, like an iPad, and it says Jody Benson. And I'm like, I wonder if that's like the Jody Benson. No way, though. There's no way that it could be. And at the, uh, what are these called where you get your luggage, the carousel things? Oh, one was like broken, so it was so jam packed with so many people, and we're all just in sardines waiting. And it's been 10 minutes, and I happen to turn around, and who is coming down the escalator but the freaking Little Mermaid? And I'm like, oh my god. And other voice actors who are with me are like, Caitlin, why are you crying? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm crying. Uh, but yeah, so I made myself go up and like introduce myself to her. And now she does cons a lot, and I've been at plenty of shows with me, and she still remembers when we met that one time and all of that. So I still think that she's fantastic, and I've even... Um, got to audition for some projects and then later when I don't get it and I found out Jody Benson got it, I'm like, good for her! <laughs> yes! I don't even care that I didn't get it. I'm so glad she did. Um, yeah, so I still just adore her. I think she's lovely, but I will also echo my colleagues' sentiments that I work with a lot of really fantastic people and because I direct, I see them on the daily and they still... On the daily and they still just blow me away uh, with their talent. Uh, Lucy Christian in particular is someone that when I was still new at voice acting and I wasn't directing, I'd made like a little vision board and I'd put a picture of her on it because I just thought she was so cool and I loved like her theater background and she had a master's in theater and I thought that was so rad and I wish that I'd gone to graduate school and all this stuff. And now like I direct her, I could just call her right now and be like, what up Lucy? Also loves Jesus, by the way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I think she's at a con, I think she's at Sack Anime right now. But anyway, the folks that I work with inspire me all the time. And this is a hard industry, it really is. But I like what Mark said earlier, that we're all pretty tight-knit and very welcoming um, to one another, and that's really cool. And just to be inspired by each other's talent makes the hard times uh, worth it. Yeah. I think for me, right at the start, uh, and I've never told him this, so no one can tell him, uh, but it was my dad. Um, when I was a kid, my father really, really, really wanted to be a voice actor. And I didn't know this at the time. Um, I knew he had spent a number of days in the garage recording things onto a tape cassette. 
that he then spent months mailing out to various studios around Los Angeles. I didn't know what it was about, and I didn't know what that meant, but I knew he had done that. And it wasn't until I booked my first uh, lead in anime that he told me what it was that he was doing and how proud he was that I was able to do something that he had worked so hard at and oh failed gosh. at. Aww. So um, for me, it, it was a, a big moment of just understanding what it takes to be in this career and how fortunate and lucky I was to be working in it. Um, beyond that, um, I, I not to, to make too much of a big deal out of it, but um, when I was first starting, there were not a lot of people who looked like me in the industry. Yeah. Um, not a lot of black voice actors were very particularly celebrated. Um, and I had the opportunity, while I was still learning and still new at this, to talk to people like Phil Lamar, Keith Silverstein, and uh, Bo... Uh, Billingsley. Thank you, yeah. Billingsley. I feel so bad. No, um, it's okay. It's late. It's late. Oh. Okay. He's so good about that. He's really, yeah. really sweet man. But um, I had the opportunity to speak with these amazing talents who all have very deep masculine voices. And I sound like Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> so it was really weird. What's wrong with that? That's a great person to say. You're like. Spider Man. Not a problem at all. Not, by all means, not a complaint. <laughs> but it was, it was a weird moment for me to have to kind of juxtapose the idea that a lot of the people who looked like me in the industry had really deep, resonant voices that I did not have. And so for the longest time, it felt like there wasn't a place for me. Um, and then I met Kyle Lebert. And Kyle spent six years of his life answering my frantic phone calls that I was not good enough to be doing this. So, big shout out to Kyle as well the for best. being an amazing, amazing mentor. We love Kyle. Also, to dry all the tears in the room right now, I'm telling your dad on you. No! <laughs> I know where you live. He can't know I love him! Call his dad. Call his dad. I, I can I can scarcely top all that, but I, I will say it's kind of a bookend thing, um, because very similar answers to literally everything that all these folks have said. One thing that I, I feel really uh, good about is because between people that I grew up with getting to hear that influenced me, people who are my contemporaries that I inspired by, and people who are new and un or, or unknowns, you know, that I, I know of that I think are super talented and maybe haven't hit like their big time kind of thing yet. Um, in getting to do casting here and there for you know, video games and some stuff uh, once in a while, um, whenever I have the opportunity, I, f I feel like it's I get to give back to the others that do inspire me. You know, whether it be like um, you know, because even the veterans, even some of the best of the best, that they have slow periods, they you know kind of have shelf lives, they fall out of people's consciousness, that, you know, for decisions and. Um, you know, others that get kind of pigeonholed into some of the same kind of characters that, they, you know, maybe they want to explore something new. Or again, like even new folks and all our unknown folks that just haven't been discovered yet. Like, I, I always look at that as like, we get to give that when, when we when we are in casting decision, you know, making type of positions, we can give back to the people that that do inspire us in all sorts of different ways. And, uh, and I love that. And I, I know a lot of people that do casting try to do that as well. While also doing the job of I have to pick the right people for something. But that's, that's a nice kind of bonus to it as well. So, yeah. <laughs> These are beautiful, excellent stories. Again, panel, thank you for this. Uh, leading right into my next question. Chris, I'm actually going to start with you because you, sure. you alluded to it. Um, as far as we have, we have our voice actors here, we've had our voice actors from before that have paved the way. Would you, would each of you, would any of you mind shouting out somebody that, who may not be prevalent just yet, but crowd watch out because, you know, we're working on something, they, they could be something special. Somebody that you think should be shouted out or somebody that you'd like to highlight, anybody that may come to mind. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, have you guys seen, because uh, there's so many wonderful indie animation projects that are getting so much attention out, do you guys know of a, a, a thing called Monkey Wrench? Yes. So it's, it's a, look it up, it's hysterically funny, and oh my god, beautifully animated, this guy, uh, Josh Palmer, Zarel, amazing animator, and uh, a buddy of mine who I've known since like, 2000. Three, uh, Chris Zito. Called it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I have worked with Zito on almost every animation project I've ever done, and uh, he plays. I forget the name of the character. He plays the the black cat guy. I was like, oh, goody. Uh, maybe, yeah. And 
that's one of those like, oh, finally, like now up on a grander scale, everybody can see just how hysterical he is when you just put him in front of a microphone. Just like Zito, just do whatever, and it's amazing. Um, I, I've worked with him at a lot of my old Newground stuff and some of my other uh, video games professionally and things. So much funny. It's so much funny. So, good. so much fun and is so very funny. funny. He's so yeah. much funny. So, good. Much funny. Zito, so much funny. <laughs> Put that on his business card. You really should. <laughs> Bosco's gonna be mad at Don't me because I might take You're his. You're gonna take mine. Um, I have the pleasure of being on a weekly D and D show with Edward Bosco and a couple of other friends, of which Zito is included. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but a good friend of ours uh, very recently had uh, the opportunity to voice uh, a major villain uh, in a game. I believe it was called Ghost Runner. Yes. Two. Well, he was in both. Yeah. Um, so he was in Ghost Runner and Ghost Runner 2, uh, and, and both the game and his performance have been nominated for uh, a few awards around the internet. Uh, his name is Connor McKinley. Um, he is absolutely incredible. Um, a very sweet man, very deserving of attention that he does not get and does not know how to get. Um, Great voice. So he is an, a, a fantastic voice and honestly a very good sense of naturalism that is very hard to teach voice actors because a lot of us want to be cartoon characters. Um, and Connor's sound, he's got one of the realest sounds I've ever heard. Yes. Um, so yeah, my, my, my vote goes to Connor McKinley. You're welcome. <laughs> I have to absolutely shout out my dear friend Amanda Kay. Um, she is legitimately one of the most genuinely and uniquely talented actresses I have ever known in my entire life. Um, I had the absolute pleasure of directing her as the lead in a show that I produced called Megaton Girl. And without that show, without Amanda, there would be no Megaton Girl. She absolutely nailed that role. She nails all of the emotion and the high, the high moments and the low moments. And she brings so much to that role. And it means so much to me that she is part of that. And she's also amazing as Vivi in Mystery Skulls. She's in a show called Slug Terra, and she deserves the world, and I hope that she is getting the success that she deserves in the future. She absolutely deserves it. Uh, I, uh, go ahead, give me okay. a minute. <laughs> so, uh, I need to shout out my girl, Lizzie Freeman. Yeah! Because both of us started, like, I met her about 12 years ago. We started around the same, um, just on YouTube projects. We both started in the My Little Pony era, era so we did dubs. So both of us, like, would try to rival, friend, friendly rival, one-up each other kind of thing. So if I'd get something, she'd end up in the same show, or she'd get something, I'd in the, be in the same show. So, um, I'm, but it's always in good faith for me. And then last year we both auditioned for Pomni. Um, and uh, I, when I saw that she got it, I'm like, that's her. That's just her in general. I'm like, okay, I'm so proud of her. So yeah, I gotta shout her out. <laughs> She's not a secret anymore, but when I but when I first started working on Jujutsu Kaisen, I heard Ann Yatko, and I was like, yeah. who's that? Yeah. Who is that? She's good. <laughs> yeah, and now she's a big deal. But I was like, that voice, that's like it just wasn't exactly what I expected, or the read wasn't exactly. And I was like, no, she's got like that kid's got something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but now she, yeah, now she's a big superstar. But just all, it's fun to hear those people. And sometimes I hear them, and they, they already are big deals. Like, I won't, rec I won't recognize a voice, and, and I'll be like recording, and I'll be like, who is that? That was great. And it's always either Ben Diskin or Ray Chase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear Ben's been doing this for a while, like for they, a and they're not, years. Yeah, but it's a different voice that I don't think is them. You know what I mean? That, and that's what's so cool is when somebody does something different all of a sudden, that you're like, I didn't know they had that in them. So those are my things. Um, this is a fun question. It's one of my favorite things as a director to elevate new voices and find new folks and bring them in and lift them up and see what they can do. And uh, I had a really fun time with a show that started in the pandemic and then we had a season two of it recently. It's called Horimiya. Yeah. Ooh, so to watch good. Horimiya. Mark, you were in Horimiya. Um, but uh, you're already on this panel, so we don't need to elevate you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, the person I want to speak of, you all probably know him, is Bel Shabaru Safe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bell. Yeah, Bell. Yeah, Bell. We all call him Bell. Bell is 
so fun and cool and I didn't know him at all but ended up with an audition from him really enjoyed his voice and I wanted a fully BIPOC cast and he fit the bill but also his voice is fantastic and then during after the pandemic when season two came around I got to work with him physically in person and not remote anymore and he just has so much energy and passion uh, for the work and talking about voice actors lifting up other voice actors that's what he does all day yes. long yes. All, he will celebrate all everybody's day. wins um, he's just such a champion of the art form and just a real sweet person but in addition he's freaking talented yeah he's so very very good um and he has just a, a depth of voices for monsters and scary things, but his just natural speaking voice is just so fun and pleasant and different to listen to. Uh, he's a good dude, and I really hope that um, more roles come his way and that you guys hear more from him. He's and now we know guy. how to pronounce his last name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. So I'll piggyback on that. Belshiver. I thought of three people, but I'm going to do two of his. Have any of you guys seen Lackadaisy? The pilot? Uh, so number one, Malcolm Ray. Uh, yeah. is phenomenal. I went to the same college as him and talking about representation in the business, he is an incredible BIPOC actor who is in Lackadaisy and I think he is going to explode. And then his castmate, Michael Kovach, is yes. also, yes. he needs Michael. to be in more of these cons because he's yeah. absolutely Michael incredible. He's in that, he's in Digital Circus with Lizzie. He's incredible. And if you and guys know who that funny. is, you will. Yeah. He's directing us on Billy Busta. Yeah. Yes. He's directing us on Billy Busta. <laughs> Well done. So again, folks, make sure you've taken note of the names that our panel here have given you, names to look out for. And again, it's, it's wonderful to hear our voice actors, our directors, our casters, elevating each other. You know, this is a team, and again, this, there's room for all of us here, which is a, a beautiful message. And I'm keeping the questions easy here because I know it's late, and I know... These are easy? <laughs> <laughs> no, Bosco. <laughs> Well, we're just going to reminisce on old times. Your favorite moments in the voice acting booth or interacting with fans? Favorite moments. <laughs> think about that for a second. And again, uh, folks, while I'm going to let the cast think uh, for a quick minute here. I, I just uh, to let you know, there will be a fan Q&A session uh, towards the end of the later part of this panel. The fourth uh, hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fourth hour. <laughs> no, no, no. The fourth hour. <laughs> I will, say, uh, I will say this, what will end up happening here is uh, we will have you come up to the mic or I'll bring the mic to you, uh, you cannot make your way up here. Again, the voice actors or myself do reserve the right to skip a question if we're not comfortable with you uh, answering it. Sit down, we don't like your question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do my best, of course, to scream to make sure that everything is appropriate for all of you, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. All right, so uh, that being said, again, don't feel free, it doesn't have to be any order, and again, have fun with this one. Favorite moments in the voice acting booth or interacting with fans or both? Um, I, I will do this because I need revenge on Mark. Uh, this actually <laughs> this actually happened recently. Uh, we were working on a uh, show together and Mark and I had never worked together before and I went into the session thinking, oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, I, was, I thought I was going to be working with Damon, uh, Damon Mills. And I get into the session and I'm like, all right, this is going to be fun. And in pops this dude as the director who was ADing on that particular day. And Mark and I have been friends for over a decade and we've worked on independent projects together, but we had never professionally been actor, director, actor, actor before. And to be able to collaborate on something with him in scenes that were incredibly emotional and have him take me along that journey because we knew each other so well, he was able to pull things out of me that I wouldn't have been able to do, I don't think, with another director because he knew me personally as a person. And it was also just so cool, like we had said, to work with your friends. And I've always wanted to work with Mark, and I would have lifted him up if he wasn't already on the panel, but there you go. For me, that was cool. I'm gonna bounce off of that. Thank you, Bosco. It, it, it genuinely was an incredibly cool opportunity when I was working on that project, seeing his name on the schedule. I did actually email scheduling and went, hey, can, can I have the N-word Bosco sent you actually? <laughs> <laughs> 100%. Um, but I will bounce off of that. Um, there, uh, I mentioned The Day I Became a God earlier. Um, I, that was a show that we started during the pandemic. And I had the pleasure of working with both Clifford Shapin and Caitlin down there, uh, directing me on what was my first anime lead. 
and there, I will not spoil the show for anybody, but I will let you know it gets very sad towards the end. Um, and there's a particular episode that was extremely emotionally charged. And uh, unfortunately, uh, a couple of days before I had to go in to record for that episode, uh, a dear friend of the voice acting community passed away. And it was a very big hit that rippled through I, probably everybody on this panel, honestly. We all, we all know who we're talking about. Um, and I was devastated. Um, and two days later, I had to go in and record for this episode, which I had already watched and knew was going to be a nightmare. And Caitlin was fantastic for that session. I, I think I probably asked for a break like six or seven times because I was just teetering on the edge of a nervous breakdown and Caitlin was there to kind of guide me through what ultimately to date has been the most emotional session of my life. Um, we did some really good work there that would have been absolutely unhinged if she had not worked <laughs> some magic to keep me together. Um, I would tell that story even if you weren't here, by the way, that is genuinely one of my favorite moments in the booth. Oh, thank so you. thank you for that. Thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> Somebody tell a joke or something. I know. It's getting a little hot. Okay, here. okay. I have Fart. something to go like flip it to like lighten the mood a little bit. Um, one of my favorite moment moments was uh, recording Genshin, and uh, I was going through each of the, the lines in in order for like Dia's uh, battle moves and everything like that. I got to one, and I'm like, I looked at uh, Chris, our director, and uh, Chris, is a sweet guy. I looked at him, and I'm like, you want me to? S All right, your mommy teach you that. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what's gonna happen? It's like I know. <laughs> and so literally, all of the fans, wherever I go, there's always at least five people when I sign things. Like, can, can, can you write the, the thing? Can you write the thing. <laughs> you know what the thing? I know right. what the thing is. <laughs> yes, I'll write it for you. <laughs> Um, so I worked on the first eight seasons of Pokemon before the cast was completely fired and replaced. And I had moved to LA at that point, so it was okay. I didn't, I had already moved on. But it was, you know, that was tough for a lot of us. We were contractually not allowed to go back for a while. And then the show moved here in season 23, <laughs> which is crazy how old I am. But, uh, but uh, I got to audition. Pokemon again, and this time it was being directed by my college friend Lisa Ortiz. Lisa, 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 Lisa. 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 we love, we love, we yeah. And I mean, again, we have Lisa and I have so much history and have known each other so long. So, got to audition for her and work on it with her as the director, which is it's a it's a whole different experience. And we you know we try to get through the work fast because we end up going on tangents and talking about our, uh, our lives because it's so hard to get work done when it's your friend. But we, we get it done. And she's a great director. And it is also cool, like, you know, to see your friends in this other position. Because sometimes it's, it's hard to take your friends seriously because I'm like, you're a director. Like, I, I was twerk at a party in college with you. Like, but she's so good that, you know, it, it's awesome. And it's like, it's a very full circle thing for a lot of us. Were there in the early days. So, yeah. um, I, uh, I worked on a Cartoon Network show a few years ago called OKKO, OK Let's Be Heroes. Oh, yeah. And um, I was going through a pretty bad depression, and then one day I get a DM from Ian Cordy, who I'd met a few times. He like substitute taught one of my uh, classes when I was doing animation. Um, I'd see him at, at the conventions once in a while, and I had just done uh, Tales of Zisteria, which Caitlin and I were both then played opposite together, and that was my first gig in LA came out and he was like oh that's really came cool. out and he was like oh that's really cool and then a couple months later he DMs me saying hey are, are you union I'm doing the show and I want you on it I'm like oh, excuse me and uh, so I joined SAG got an agent um, and I thought it was just going to be this little bit part in like an episode or something I walk in the first time I go in it's like Mary Elizabeth McGlynn Jim Cummings Dave Herman from Futurama Ashley Birch and me and I'm like what am I doing here <laughs> And then it turned into oh, no 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 you're you're in you're doing the show like we want you to like be a you what they call a utility player which is where you like pick up a bunch of little recurring bits so I had like four characters throughout the three years that we did the show that were in a bunch of episodes and so for those three years I got to go to the Cartoon Network building and be in a room doing an ensemble 
relay like original animation gig that I was not in that realm. That was my one little you know dipping my toe in that world because that's like the creme de la creme of like you know voiceover gigs sometimes. And uh, to be in the room with like literally every other episode, we'd have these guests, and like they were all people that I grew up listening to, and and like. I'm like, you let, you're paying me to do I would pay you if I could. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so to just getting to do that show was a, an absolute, one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. And, and super quickly, one other second thing. Um, in this past year, I got to direct Justin Cook, who I mentioned earlier, who was like basically the person, if I had to trace it back to a single actor, was like the person that influenced me to want to do voiceover and I got to direct him in something by just happenstance and I'm like oh my god what is my life man <laughs> so that, that, that kind of you get to do a lot of cool stuff in this business if you're lucky enough somehow I don't know why I am but I thank the stars for it so did we land everybody there okay. I didn't answer I've been racking my brain just to, there's so many there's too many like I can't that's, I can't yeah. Yeah. yeah no worries <laughs> Pass. Uh, pass. Do, do you have one? Or? No, go ahead. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to try and tell this story without crying. I've been crying and thinking about the story. Um, so, back in um, 20, the end of 2018, um, I booked a show called The Beach Buds. It's a show that I don't think anybody here has ever seen because it's aired in many countries, but it's never aired in the States. Um, but it is a, a show that was produced in Indonesia, and we recorded it out here. It is a prelay show, which for those of you who don't know what prelay is, it's when you record um, the audio and then they animate to your voice. And it was the first time that I ever got to be part of an ensemble cast where we all recorded in the same room together. Um, and at that point in my career, and I still, I still deal with this a bit, um, but I dealt with a lot of self-doubt, like, and I still do, um, that like I didn't feel like I was good enough to, to be here. I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't feel like um, I felt like I was maybe like holding everybody else back. Um, and I booked that show, and the cast and the rest of the cast and myself, we we clicked like immediately. Like two sessions in, we were already like ride or die with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that whole experience, we recorded every Tuesday between December of 2018 and July of 2019. So we saw each other every Tuesday. And that, um, that role got me through the death of two cats that I, because I knew that every Tuesday I was going to come in and no matter what I was feeling, for four hours I was going to laugh my ass off. <laughs> Be because it was genuinely the funniest thing I've ever worked on. The cast was so on point all the time. Everyone was perfectly cast, and we all bounced off of each other so well. We knew like we could like push each other in one way, and the other one would like immediately like grab it, all loop it back, and then we would just it was such a great dynamic. And I got directed by my favorite director to work with, Tony Oliver, who was my teacher, um, and he is my hero. And everyone in that cast is also my hero, Dino Andrade, Christopher Corey Smith, Kim Lintran, Ryan Bartley, and Jason Marnoka, all wonderful people. And by the end of those seven months, we were so tightly knit as a family. It is genuinely the greatest experience I've ever had in my life. By the end of it, we were at, you know, we were hanging out at the end of our last session at, um, uh, at a Mexican restaurant that's literally like just two two feet away from Bang Zoom, um, and we were just sharing stories and crying for those who could not be there with us, um, and it was truly a beautiful experience. I hope I get to have something like that again, but if I don't, um, I can happily know that I had one of the greatest experiences that an actor can possibly have in this career, and I hope that everyone here gets to have something as beautiful as that. Here, here. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. All right. I think it's time. We're actually going to move. So first thing for all of our voice actors, um, thank you. I know this panel said it was going to go to 8.15. I'm going to... We're going to... I'm, I'm going to... It's not there yet. Thank, uh, but I am going to... 
cut a little early. That way we can get you a little bit of extra rest. I know you all have long days, and it, it's freezing and it's frigid. It's really cold. The anemic in me is screaming. So that being said, uh, we're going to move towards the fan Q&A. Uh, a couple of ground rules uh, as we go. If you'd like to ask a question to our to our panel, please direct it to only one or two of our panelists at a time. Totally okay if you want to direct a, another question to another panelist. Uh, please move back to the end of the line, and then we'll uh, we'll get you moving. Um, we'll just line up down the middle. Again, uh, I'll try to screen the, your questions, and if again, if it is something that we may not want to ask, or if the panelists do feel uncomfortable answering it, we do reserve the right again to move move on with it. No hard feelings again. We just want to make sure that we, we take care of our we take care of our guests here. That's the most important thing. Uh, while we're getting people lined up, real quick, anybody, uh, real quick before so that way we can get people lined up if they want to, or I throw random questions at you myself, which may or may not be fun. Uh, one piece of advice, just so we can get that question out of the way. Uh, one piece of advice you would give to any aspiring voice actor or actress. Uh, who may want to jump in the, into this line of work, or this may be something they're very, very passionate about. What's one piece of advice you would give? It doesn't matter how many voices you can do, it's the acting behind them. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. It doesn't matter if you come up to me and I'm like, I can do this voice, I can do this voice, I can do this voice. No, show me the acting that you can put behind them. Show me the archetype behind that voice. That's more important, that'll get you booked. Uh, I'll just throw it to piggyback on that. On top of being a good actor, you have to love this. Um, that's the only thing that will get you through the roller coaster that will be the ups and downs of this business. So if you don't love it, it's going to be a real struggle, even if you're an amazing performer. So, yeah, knowing that you love it is real important. Do research on the people you take classes with. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have favorite actors and and they teach classes and it's exciting to, to know them, but they don't always know how the industry works or how... To teach. To teach. Yeah. I said it. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, listen, to someone like Caitlin who's behind, studying with someone who also knows behind the scenes because this is as much of a business as it is an artistic endeavor. So don't, I don't, I hate seeing you guys spend your money on, on your hard-earned money on these classes and equipment when you're not ready and you can form free practice groups with your friends online. Go to these, I mean, you guys have the internet. It's amazing. It's a great thing that we did not have. Mm -hmm. So put up, set up free practice groups with your friends. We're all chipping to get a coach to, to do something like that. There are really economical ways to do it. And please, please save your money. On that subject also, uh, don't drop $1,500 on a demo reel until you know you're ready for a demo reel. Because if you record a demo reel really quickly before you're ready, that is going to be how people remember you for years. Yep. Also, don't spend $50 on a demo reel. Make sure you're actually getting a good demo reel made by someone who knows what they're doing and understands how demo reel production works and what is necessary to get representation in this field. So, no demo before you're ready, and then when you are ready, don't cheap out on it. Uh, practice a lot, as much as you possibly can. Um, be constantly reading things. A, a thing that I did for a long time, I'm, I'm actually back to doing it again now just to keep my chops up. Um, read books out loud. Uh, <clears throat> play old video games with no voice acting and do all the characters do it with a friend and split them up like I developed so many voices and, and characters like actual personalities let alone voices through doing stuff like that you know the Ace Attorney game stuff like that you know Paper Mario um, it's all about practice 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 so you can have cold reading and, uh, and just di different choices and all these different things ground into you on a constant basis because you might not always be working all the time um, but but having the craft constantly, uh, you know, in, in your sense of self is going to aid you. So all the, like and, and and helps you evolve and reinvent yourself and find new and exciting things and different things that you maybe had not done before. Um, always always be practicing. So. Thank you, panel, for that one. Again, excellent excellent advice. Uh, by charge, I'm now going to ride. Charge, I'm now going to run around and find everybody so that way they can all sit. Uh, and again, I'll be able to scream. Uh, okay, so go ahead. Um, yeah, stand up if you, if you can. And uh, go ahead. Um, who's your question direct to? And of course, introduce yourself as well. Hi, uh, I'm Jalen. Hi. Uh, I'm Hi, an animator. Um, I have a question for Chris. Hi. Uh, so 
when you remade the Raw's Forest uh, rap, the Super Mario RPG rap. This is very specific. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the is deep. <laughs> uh, is, were you like completely satisfied with how that turned out, or is there anything that you would change specifically? Not a thing. Do you guys know uh, the Super Mario RPG? It is yeah, the only I did, I did this animated little cartoon about Mario <laughs> RPG, which is my favorite game of all time. And a couple months ago, I got uh, actually a bunch of our colleagues, because apparently a lot of people in the voiceover world love that game. Uh, Zena Robinson, Danny Chambers, Alejandro Saab, all these people. And I got them together and we did a remixed version of that song along with uh, Jameson Bose, who you guys probably know best as the, um, the heavy metal voice of a Crunch Girl! Like that, like that, yeah, that, it's amazingly talented and we did that together and a rustic, amazing rapper uh, did the rap section. And I'm super satisfied with it. And I found out, actually, you'll like this. I found out that a whole bunch of the staff of the original Super Mario RPG on Super Nintendo in like 90, from 95, 96 have seen that video. I found out one of them was on Twitter. Here's a bunch of concept art from the game that no one's ever seen. And I was having an interaction with them and I, I liked the video. Of course I did. You know. And they were like, what, what, you made this? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, we've seen this. I'm like, I, I'm, excuse me? <laughs> we... So like the one of the VFX artists, the character designer of Gino, the map designer, the director have seen. And I'm, I don't know if Yokoshima Mora-san, who did the the song originally, has seen. I would die if I found out that she's seen it. But that was a tremendous honor. So like knowing that, I wouldn't change a thing, and I'm very happy. But I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed. it. I hope you guys that like that game and have seen that and have enjoyed it too. So thank you, thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. All right, we have our next question here. Go ahead. Hi. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then who your question is directed to. Uh, hi, my name's Casey, hey, and hi. this one's for Amber, and considering how um, people like you started online, how did you eventually get roles in the industry? Because I think that's just very fascinating how, pe how people can make that kind of jump. Oh, making the jump from doing things just from online into the actual industry? Yes. Okay, so... Let me see. It doesn't, it doesn't count when I'm 12. It does, the 12-year-old... Because when I was 12, I used to do silly Naruto dubs and things like that. So that's, I guess, that's, that's officially... Hobby. That's hobbying. With my, my crappy stand mic. Uh, yeah, skip forward. 2011, that's when I decided, okay, I want to get serious about it. So I started off on a show called Animeme on YouTube. Animeme, Yo Mama, Channel Frederator, 107 oh Facts. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, so I did that stuff. And I did it for, like, either free or just, like, under... Like paid just to get it on my resume, and I just kept building and building and building um, up more and more until I eventually moved to Los Angeles. About this year, it will make seven years, and uh, that's when I got in the big leagues af after building up my resume. I started in Virginia, and uh, I did all the internet stuff there, and like took all that, moved to LA, and uh, yeah. That, and here that's you are. Pretty much how I started, mostly internet person. <laughs> Thank you. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself and who your question is directed to, and then fire away. Hey, I'm Rob. Um, so, Caitlin and Tara, I guess I'm curious from like the very beginning of your career to like where things are now in 2024. Like, obviously, a lot has changed, but if you had to pick like the biggest thing that's different now, what would that be? Technology has changed everything. Yeah. Um, we used to compete, like when I would go to a, like when I auditioned to do that, we worked a free commercial. There were probably 20, 25, maybe 30 girls who maybe went to that audition. Now when an, uh, an audition goes out, they get auditions from around the world, probably from space. Um, we are competing with aliens for these auditions. And not just aliens, AI voices. Oh, we're competing no. with there it is. No long, I wondered how long it would take. Yeah, the world, aliens, and robots. So that's your competition now, um, which is very different than me going to a, a, just a casting director's office, reading and getting instant feedback from that casting director and getting direction. It is so impersonal now. It hurts my heart how impersonal it is. I, I, yeah, I, I wish you guys all could have had that experience of going to casting offices and, and getting direction. I miss it. Oh, I miss, mm. it too. I miss it so much. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with what Tara said, and I'd also say another big difference is the how much we do and how much we have to do and how quickly we have to do it. 
So anime has grown so much, which is a fantastic thing to see for someone who is a fan of anime before I got into voice acting. That's wonderful how much there is, how much access we have to it legally, and also, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like currently, like topically, the thing that's new, you can see it right now. You know, that's cool. Um, but that also means that bigger companies have caught on to the money that they can make with anime, which means that it needs to get cranked out faster, which means that corners get cut, which means that directors like me are working on four things at a time, which means, which means, which means, <laughs> right? So I do worry that ultimately this, this standard and the bar that we worked so hard to raise back in, in what, at the beginning of my career, but what I still consider like the heyday of really good dubs like Full Metal Alchemist, the original yeah, one, Through yeah. Brotherhood, that time. Um, it's like, how can we maintain this standard that we've set if companies don't see why a dub that's that good matters? And instead, we ha are being reduced yet again to just another language option, which is how I'm starting to feel. Honestly, I'm getting a little burned out, I'll be honest. But that's why we come to cons, because you guys kind of feed us and remind us, like, we're, we're the ones, you're the ones we're doing it for, you know? So that's, I know that's probably a, a negative answer that you didn't want to hear. <laughs> what you're kind of feeling. So the positive is, there's more anime! Hooray! Yeah. And it, there are more opportunities for new actors to get into it because there's more of it. Um, but it's also harder for those new actors, honestly, to get in because the competition is more stiff, because we're so strapped for time. Most directors are going to be more apt to cast folks who already know what they're doing and just take a chance on newcomers every so often. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll have another one over here. Go ahead and introduce yourself and who you're directed to. Hi, I'm Erilyn, and I just have like a to Kate and Glass. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, hi. Oh my god, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> it's okay, you can cry. It feels good. We'll all cry. <laughs> Everybody cry. A lot of crying. We're all crying. Let's go ahead. Please don't make me cry again. <laughs> um, so, it's not a question, but I just like wanted to say that, like, all right, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, you've been a big part of my childhood. Oh my god. <laughs> sorry. Oh. Um, and I just wanted to say that, like, I really, like, um, it's such an honor meeting you. I'll talk to you. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say that, like, you are just phenomenal to me. And it's like, Thank you. this is literally, like, my biggest dream. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> You're sweet. <laughs> We'll do, we'll do a couple more here because I know again we're getting late. I don't want to keep our voice actors out too late here. We're here for them. I'll see you there. Don't worry, don't worry. I got a talk for you. Here, next. It's here, right? We got you. Um, the director of the Hawaii Tower. Okay. Hi, my name is Chris. You've been in the animation industry. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a college student. My name's Lily. Uh -huh. and I want to own my own animation studio, and I'm wondering if there's like anything that, because like I want to make my workplace like as like possible like beneficial for my workers as well. Is there mm -hmm. anything like you would recommend putting in like inclusivity or like programs or stuff? Oh my gosh. Uh... Well, so much of what I do, I, I, those of you who don't know, I do, like I mentioned before, I do animations and stuff, any, any productions and things, and I've done some professional stuff here and there. Um, God, in terms of the business side, I, I'm probably not the best authority of that. Um, I, I mean, saving up money through whatever means um, and uh, collaborating with like-minded people. There, there are so many talented artists and animators uh, you know, out there in the world, you know, I know that tw Twitter's kind of the bane of our collective existence, but there, it's also the place where I've found so many good people that I've grown to work with on my own stuff and that I've become friends with, that I've recommended for other jobs and things. Um, look around, like, find lots of other like-minded people and trustworthy people that are cool that can work with you, you know, even if you're starting small. Uh, and that goes, honestly, also to... to uh, bringing that to the voiceover part of things as well. Same thing, a lot of us who started on the internet, like, we all worked on each other's projects and we all were doing different things and, you know, we all had a similar passion. Like, you know, even though the internet can be not always the happiest place, happiest uh, place, 
Um, there are communities where you can meet so many other people that you can connect with and grow to work with and, 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 and go from independent to professionals. A lot of us have had the chance to do that. Um, so, so find what's out there. And also, and, and from a business standpoint, save up money. Save There's a money. lot of really save. good indie animators that are coming out right now who want to collaborate and they want to like see, like they want to lift each other up because that is like a big thing with the indie animation scene right now is that we're all trying to lift each other up and see like and help each other. I'm working with two other animators and we're both, well, sorry, both all three of us are helping each other with our own stuff right now and it has been a great experience getting to collaborate with them. And clear, open collaboration is another very important part of working with other animators, um, especially on an indie level, because on the indie level, that is the clearest, most open communication that you can have, because you will have direct communication with the people that you're working with, and that's very important to have, too. Absolutely, yeah. All right, thank you, uh, panelists. We're gonna go through this question, then three more. We're gonna keep them, try to keep them real quick again, because again, gotta get our, wanna get our guys rest here, so. Again, I'll go ahead and introduce yourself. Gotta go yourself. thaw out, really. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to get it, to keep it open here, so. Doing great. Yeah. There we go. Howdy, I'm Bianca. Um, I'm Bianca. I just want to say I'm very awestruck at the people in front of me right now. Um, I've heard you all on the screens, and now I'm seeing you all in person. I kind of just walked in here. Um, my question is towards Edward Bosco. Oh, that's a mistake. <laughs> yes. You played my two favorite characters in fiction kind of like back to back, and I just want to know, I guess, it might be kind of dumb, but what was that experience? You went from Doom Eternal mm -hmm. playing the Marauder, and then you went to- That's right, that's you, I hate you so much. Right, most people, <laughs> I wasn't kidding. And then you played Alistair. Uh-huh, oh, that's interesting too. I wasn't ready for the first one. Okay. Hell of a Uh, so- Playing demons. I see. I don't, man, I just gotta, I just play a lot of demons, what can I say? I will say Doom was really cool because I played Doom as a kid, like the OG Doom. Uh, funny story, I was also the icon of Sin in Doom, so I got to do two things in Doom, which was awesome. With the Marauder, it was really funny having my friends play the game and being pissed off at how hard he was, because you had to figure out his attack patterns with the blocking. I love it! They were like, I hate you, I hate your character, you're frustrating, goodbye. <laughs> with Alistair, I really liked it, because I didn't realize how many people didn't realize that I could do like the old timey radio thing, because my background, like I said, I was a journalist, and I was in radio, and TV, so I used to be on the radio, and so getting to do something that kind of played into my background was a lot of fun, especially because when we were doing the pilot, Viv gave us some freedom to improv a little bit. So the scene at the end where he's talking about the jambalaya, they basically said, hey, we're gonna have a panning shot of the hotel, just ad-lib as Alistair and whatever he would say, and I knew he was from New Orleans, so I was like, cool, he's gonna talk about jambalaya. I don't know why, but it's gonna be the end, and that was just me going off, and they faded out. So it was a lot of fun to work on that. But I appreciate that I've gotten to play so many diverse characters from a radio host who's a demon to a demon that just frustrates all my friends because of their play mechanic. You, you did also, by the way, you used to play the devil a lot. I like did also play cartoons. the devil a lot. Some kind all of, over Newground. Yeah, uh, so some kind of demonic through life. And now I play an assassin who kills a bunch of devils. Hell yeah. It's all, it's all comes full circle for It you. does. Thank you for your question, I appreciate it. Just a small yeah, message here from one of our fans. Yeah, hi, Austin. What? Were, yes. Oh, okay. hi. <laughs> did, did, were you one of the finalists Day Exile in... Uh, in 2011? Or, yes. Yes, yes, that was me. <laughs> so was I. I actually, oh! I actually recognized oh, you, yeah. Oh, the, here, here we go. Oh, here he comes. Oh. He's gonna cry again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. cry. That wasn't a question, that was just, this is about to be a moment. <laughs> God, that was so wonderful. I remember when I thought the first time before they picked you, I thought, wow, he deserves to be finalist. Aww. It's so good to see you again. And yes, I'm, just, I'm really glad to see you. I mean, it was the thing, it was just been here for all of us. I don't know what to say, but. The Bachelor. Anime, anime. Great moments. This is what this, this is what we're talking about. Here. All right. Uh, as we move on. All right. Uh, all right. Go ahead and uh, are you able to say that? Okay. Cool. If you wouldn't mind, uh, go ahead and just introduce yourself. Uh, direct it to one or two people on the panel, and then we'll ask. Uh, hello. My name is George. Um, Hi. Yeah. For another question for up and comers. Um, 
Do you guys know any good resources we can get point uh, that we can have a point to? What type? Like, what do you mean by like resources? Online resor uh, resources. I, like, I, want, I, want, I want to be a voice actor. actor. Yeah. 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 We all have the same answer. Yeah. 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 Nice and simple. Yep. Yeah. 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 Read it all. Yeah. Well, and, and by the way, when you've read every word of that site and you still want to do this professionally, then then God's yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. yeah. If I can, like. It's a great place to start. Yeah, it really is a great place. When earlier someone had asked us, like, or you had asked us to give like some advice, everybody do an advice thing, and I didn't really throw anything out there. Uh, really, my advice to anybody who thinks they want to do this, you know, Edward said, make sure you love it. Make sure what you love is the acting. Yeah, You're yeah, here yeah. because you love anime. But I really, really, anybody who's considering approaching this job in any way, shape, or form, you really need to ask yourself why it is you think you want to do it. Because sometimes what you're really after is the sense of camaraderie that you see that we all have, that we've been sharing, how we lift each other up, how we can meet complete strangers and be friends with them because of our shared experience. So sometimes what you're really looking for is a community and voiceover is a community but to say that you're seeking like the acting part of it is something else wholly other you know or what you what you really love is the types of stories that anime tells and you just want to be involved in them more and the way that you as a viewer connect with the story is through the character so of course the first thing you think of is well then I need to be an actor I need to be a character Anime, if you haven't noticed, is really big in the West now, and there are tons of jobs in anime that are not acting. Are you good at math? We need accountants. Have you considered law? We need lawyers. Um, seriously, like people who work in HR, like Crunchyroll is a global company with, with offices all over the planet. So if you like anime, and anime is your jam, but you're like, I don't want to talk in front of people, I don't know how to do voices, and you think that becoming a voice actor is your only way to have an anime job, you are wrong. <laughs> you are wrong. So if you are like, yes, acting is my jam, and I want to do that, and I want to work in this little pocket of the world of acting, that's cool too. But just know, like, there's so much to be done and like anime wants you you know we do you, you can do you. you can do marketing you can do social media you can do copywriting you can there, do so many many things with you speak japanese you can translate yes you yeah. can translate yeah. right and not just japanese like uh crunchyroll's putting out dubs in like 12 or 15 languages yeah. you know so there's a lot of work to be had within the industry not just acting just want to say that. Okay. Indeed. <laughs> Final question here. A uh, little bit nuanced, but yeah. Just direct to one or two. Keep it real simple, real short. Yeah. Uh, I'm Trevor. I'm cold. Uh, Hi, Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, cold. I'm Dan. I like Trevor. <laughs> Where specifically would one find auditions for online or in person? Like Voice acting club. Voice, Voice acting acting club. Voice acting club. Casting club. club. Yeah. Uh, yes. Can you say that a couple more times so I can write it? Down? Vo voice acting. Voice acting. Club. club. Correct. There is a forum and, a, and a, there is a forum and a very active Discord server full of voice actors who want to help uh, want to help you lift yourself up. And there's lots of auditions there. There's lots of resources to help you as an actor and to play with what equipment that you can get and just basic resources in general. Um, it's a wonderful community. It's where I got my start. Um, and I can never sing enough praises for the Voice Acting Club. It is a wonderful, wonderful community started by Kira Buckland, who is another amazing voice actress. We all love Kira, yeah. She's the brain behind that. And a lot of people who are working professionally came from that community, a yeah. bunch of us, et cetera. So, yeah, great resource, too. All right. Well, I, I, oh, 
Do we have any? Everyone's like up here sharing. Oh yeah. No. And there's, so there's a there's a Twitter account that like retweets indie yes, stuff, and I'm right. trying to remember what it is. It's called yeah. No Studio in particular. It is called No Studio in particular. Yeah. 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 Okay. No studio I'm, I'm in gonna particular. shout. Uh-huh. I'm going to shout out No Studio in particular. It is run by one of my best friends in the world, Reese Bridger. Yes. He is absolutely yes. wonderful. <laughs> the stuff that he does is fantastic. He casts. He also retweets indie stuff. He is wonderful. Please follow No Studio in particular. Yes. I believe it is N I S yes. N S I P on um, uh, No Studio on, in particular. Uh, yes, on Twitter. Please absolutely go there. It absolutely go there. It is wonderful. And yes, please do that. Re- real quick, also, and related to this stuff as well. Uh, Boss, going out to put you on the spot. Do you want to talk about the thing we're doing tomorrow? Oh yeah, go for it. No, it's, it's, your, it's your thing. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, go for it. Great. <laughs> okay, Bosco is hosting a panel that he is graciously allowing me to invade. Uh, that is called "So You Want to Be a Voice Actor," right? Yes. Uh, and it involves it involves a short Q and A at the beginning, which will be similar to this. But then we're also going to have scripts that you guys can come and read and perform and kind of get a sense of what it's like to be handed a script on the spot and have to kind of audition and get some direction. And Chris is going to be helping me out with that. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, we, we've done it. Uh, you've done it many times. I've done yeah, it a couple of times. Place. It's a lot of fun, and, and even if even if you're not interested in necessarily being a professional, it's kind of fun. It's, it's just cool. Yeah. So please, it's uh, five o'clock tomorrow. If you guys want, well, maybe in here. I'm not sure. I think it's yeah. It's on the schedule. You'll, you guys you'll will find, find it. it. If you're curious, you'll find it on the guidebook app. So <laughs> as you punch the microphone, find it on the guidebook app. It owes me money. Sorry. Worth more than you are. That being said, uh, final words, anything, last words before we call it and uh, allow our voice actors to get the, their well-deserved rest. Anything? In your pursuits of opportunities, don't forget to be a good, genuine human being. Yes. Don't lose that, because this industry might tempt you to make you lose it. Don't. I just want to say thank you for coming out and supporting all of us at our various panels and for supporting the convention. Without you guys, none of this happens. So please keep consuming the media that you love. Please keep supporting the people and the artists that you love. Check out the artist gallery. Come swing by during our panels, autograph signings, all that stuff. We really do appreciate you. Even if you just come and say hi, your time is your most valuable asset, and we appreciate you spending it with us. <laughs> I would I would also like to say that uh, for those of you who are interested in being a voice actor, when you do make it and you are in a studio, Please treat engineers with respect. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Please. They have a tremendously difficult job making a bunch of different people who all think they're the greatest actors in the world sound good together. <laughs> Alongside with directors who are trying to make a project function, they are one of the most important people in the production process. So please be kind to engineers and make sure you learn their names and say hello. We're all working together. Absolutely. You are indeed all working together. All right. Uh, anything, was there anything else that you wanted to say? Oh, uh, my last little quick thing, and, and related to the treating others with kindness. Find you, whether you're pursuing this or otherwise, or anything in life, um, find a good sense of self. Kari said on the panel, Kari Walker said on the panel yesterday, um, be a human being, you know, find something, you know, your passion and something that just brings you joy on a day-to-day basis, you know, uh, even in, in our post-virus world, like, like remember to, to love people and be sociable and, and like really like like find who you are so that you can be a full person. Sometimes even as much as that sounds hippy dippy and all kind of like obvious or whatever, like it is actually difficult for to be a human sometimes. <laughs> and, it is. Uh, but you got and you guys have all been so so sweet. So I, I trust if you've not reached that point in your lives yet, you will. Uh, and thank you for treating us all with so much kindness that the last couple of days. Well, on behalf of Tara Sands, Amber May, Austin Lee, Matthews, Mark Allen Jr., Christopher Neosi, Caitlin Glass, and Edward Bosco, who wasn't supposed to be on this panel. I can't, I, I can't believe you threw me on the bus like that. Wow. I told you I'd get you. Buddy. I told you not to trust me. <laughs> exactly. On behalf of our wonderful voice actors, again, I want to thank you all here. Please enjoy the rest of your evening and the rest of your weekend as well. Make sure, if you have any social media, post your sharing. Hashtag Anime Los Angeles, hashtag Anime LA19, and tag Anime Los Angeles. Please follow our voice actors on their socials and support them in their ventures. Please visit their booths and their panels where you can. Other than that, folks... Please, get some rest. You hey, all deserve it. You're not my dad. I have one more panel left. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. 
Yeah, Mark Allen I Sr.? Got a, I got an 18 plus one coming up. Oh. Yeah. But come I'll see us and also our, our colleagues that were not on the panel with us on our other voiceover yeah. friends. Please come see them and give them your love, too. Come back. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Oh, and tomorrow morning we're, we're doing a panel called Wheel of Voices where we're going to be, yeah. so oh, we're gonna be spinning a wheel to see who voices what character and what voice we're going to give that oh, character. Oh, 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 it is yeah. pure chaos. One of the voices on my wheel is Winnie the Pooh Matt. and another one is Werner Herzog. <laughs> so it's, it I'm, is. I'm bringing Barack Obama tomorrow. <laughs> and he's also bringing Black Panther. So, oh my God. Yeah. This, it, it, it's going to be a ton of fun. We're all going to have a blast. I hope to see you there. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.